LDS are routinely taught that Joseph Smith was righteous with an unimpeachable character. What many see as wrongdoing in Joseph Smith was actually his obedience to God. The prophet taught that the devil has great power to deceive. He will so transform things as to make one gape at those who are doing the will of God. If any hope to find a particle of evil in one so pure as Joseph Smith, they will find, as the Lord said, that their hope shall be blasted and their prospects shall melt away as the hoar frost melteth before the burning rays of the rising sun. Any evil they think they may find in Joseph Smith, no matter how widely believed, will be a lie, for he was righteous and pure. Such claims do not hold up when we compare Smith's statements with official statements made by the LDS Church today. What a thing it is for a man to be accused of committing adultery and having seven wives when I can only find one. I am the same man and as innocent as I was 14 years ago, and I can prove them all perjurers. The exact number of women to whom Joseph Smith was sealed in his lifetime is unknown because the evidence is fragmentary. Careful estimates put the number between 30 and 40. In 1835, the Mormon Church released what would become the original Section 101 of the Doctrine and Covenants. It stated, Insomuch as this Church of Christ has been reproached with the crime of fornication and polygamy, we declare that we believe that one man should have one wife and one woman but one husband, except in the case of death when either is at liberty to marry again. In 1850, Apostle and future prophet John Taylor was called to answer the rumors that the LDS were practicing polygamy. He responded, We are accused here of polygamy and actions the most indelicate, obscene, and disgusting, such that none but a corrupt and depraved heart could have contrived. These things are too outrageous to admit of belief. I shall content myself by reading our views of chastity and marriage from a work published by us containing some of the articles of our faith. Inasmuch as this Church of Jesus Christ has been reproached with the crime of fornication and polygamy, we declare that we believe that one man should have one wife, and one woman but one husband, except in the case of death, when either is at liberty to marry again. Taylor had at least six wives at the time. Today, the LDS Church acknowledges that polygamy was practiced since the mid-1830s without ever being sustained by the membership until 1852. Until then, the LDS denied the practice over and over and even told potential converts in Europe that the charges of polygamy were false. Only after crossing the ocean and enduring the Mormon trail did they discover the truth upon their arrival in Utah. Section 101 was eventually removed from the Doctrine and Covenants, and Section 132 inserted which explicitly taught polygamy, but not until the printing of 1876. Year after year, the LDS Church lied to the public and to their own people. The lies continue to this day. The denunciation of modern polygamists is often couched in terms of obeying the laws of the land. I condemn it, yes, as a practice, because I think it is not doctrinal, It is not legal, and this church takes the position that we will abide by the law. We believe in being subject to kings, presidents, rulers, magistrates, in honoring, obeying, and sustaining the law. The problem with this claim is that polygamy was also against the laws of Illinois when the LDS were practicing it in Nauvoo. Bigamy consists in the having of two wives or two husbands at one and the same time knowing that the former husband or wife is still alive. If any person or persons within this state being married, or who shall hereafter marry, do at any time marry any person or persons, the former husband or wife being alive, the person so offending shall, on conviction thereof, be punished by a fine, not exceeding $1,000, and imprisoned in the penitentiary, not exceeding two years. In 2014, the federal courts threw out Utah's law against polygamy, so it is now legal. But it remains grounds for excommunication, 
even though Section 132 of Doctrine and Covenants has never been removed. Joseph Smith said, The same God that has thus far dictated me and directed me and strengthened me in this work gave me this revelation and commandment on celestial and plural marriage, and the same God commanded me to obey it. He said to me that unless I accepted it and introduced it and practiced it, I, together with my people, would be damned and cut off from this time henceforth. And they say, if I do so, they will kill me. Oh, what shall I do? If I do not practice it, I shall be damned with my people. If I do teach it and practice it and urge it, they say they will kill me, and I know they will. But we have got to observe it. It is an eternal principle and was given by way of commandment and not by way of instruction. Early Christians were burned at the stake or fed to lions rather than disobey God. But when LDS leaders were imprisoned for polygamy, they renounced what they had declared to be a commandment of God in the Manifesto of 1890. In spite of renouncing polygamy, some general authorities secretly practiced it until public discovery required a second manifesto in 1904. Numerous other lies about polygamy abound, such as there having been far more women than men. Joseph Smith was sealed to at least 11 women who already had living husbands. Brigham Young had 55 wives, yet Apostle John A. Witso admitted there was never a surplus of women in the church or in Utah. The implied assumption in this theory that there have been more female than male members in the church is not supported by existing evidence. On the contrary, there seems always to have been more males than females in the church. The United States Census records from 1850 to 1940 and all available church records uniformly show a preponderance of males in Utah and in the church. Your church not only whitewashes Joseph Smith's polygamy, but even his relationship with Emma. She has been portrayed in recent years as a heroine of the church and a model for every LDS woman. We are going to do something extraordinary. Danger or no, I just had to see you. Again, she is here. Undaunted, firm, and unwavering, unchangeable, affectionate. Emma, I love you. Compare this to Brigham Young's statement in General Conference. To my certain knowledge, Emma Smith is one of the damnedest liars I know of on this earth. Yet there is no good thing I would refuse to do for her if she would only be a righteous woman. But she will continue in her wickedness. Not six months before the death of Joseph, he called his wife Emma into a secret council, and there he told her the truth, and called upon her to deny it if she could. He told her that the judgments of God would come upon her forthwith if she did not repent. He told her of the time she undertook to poison him, and he told her that she was a child of hell and literally the most wicked woman on this earth, that there was not one more wicked than she. He told here where she got the poison, and how she put it in a cup of coffee. Said he, You got that poison from so-and-so, and I drank it. But you could not kill me. When it entered his stomach, he went to the door and threw it off. He spoke to her in that council in a very severe manner, and she never said one word in reply. I have witnesses of this scene all round, who can testify that I am now telling the truth. Twice she undertook to kill him. So is Emma the model of a faithful woman, or the most wicked woman in the world who tried to poison Joseph twice? Do we believe Brigham Young, or the modern LDS Church? If we don't believe Brigham, then how can we believe the modern church is true? How is the church true when it admits that Joseph Smith lied over and over and over about polygamy? Complete honesty is necessary for our salvation. Elder Mark E. Peterson once said, Honesty is a principle of salvation in the kingdom of God. Just as no man or woman can be saved without baptism, so no one can be saved without honesty.